Yes, George. We are week seven, so let's uh, let's finish strong. We're going to start off this week with uh, our faith integration, then we're going to get into the Milgram experiment, which is uh, so far every everything that we've touched on has been kind of mind-boggling. Uh, last week with the Abilene paradox, week before that with the class divided, and then the story of Flight 93 and the Stanford Prison experiment. Uh, we're all mind-boggling of how we react as people and how we work under pressures and in a team. The Milgram experiment is extremely <laughs> difficult, extremely uh, mind-boggling as well, because two-thirds of participants in the Milgram experiment, which you'll find out quickly if you don't already know, the Milgram experiment basically was uh, two people were paired, a teacher and a student, and both, everyone was uh, adults. And it was to test, they were told it was to test the uh, effect of negative impact on learning. So in other words, if somebody got an answer wrong, the teacher would hit a switch and it would give an electric shock to the student. Well, they weren't studying how that affected uh, learning in any way. They were studying actually how people would conform or be obedient to authority because the two people were paired. It was always a participant and then what we call a confederate or, or an actor. The actor would be the one that would always be receiving the shock and they were seeing how heavy the participant, how far the participant would go with shocking the uh, student when he got the answers incorrect. And what we found out that two thirds of the people were willing to give a fatal shock to the participant. To the, thankfully, it was just a confederate, and there was no actual shock being given. So think about that in terms of our teaming and how we team. A lot of folks are naturally inclined to be obedient to authority and to the overall. Um, in this case, and in many cases, not even the greater good because as you'll see, several of the participants knew something was wrong, they shouldn't continue, but they chose to be obedient to the authority or the psychologist who was in charge of the program and was telling them to just continue. So now think about that as a team leader or as a team participant. Do you ever fall into that role as a participant? Do you ever see people fall into that role? Obviously not this extreme, but do you see people fall into that role of being obedient to authority to a fault um, in whatever role you have within that team, because that's a very interesting perspective that can happen. And what can we do more importantly, what can we do as a team leader or team participant to kind of uh, not allow that to happen, to, to make our team an open and sharing more collaborative environment? I always think about that because we found in the Abilene Paradox with the group think, um, class divided 360. We as people tend to go along with the crowd and do what we're supposed to do or being told to do. So now that we know that, we need to kind of sort of work our best to break that and to have an area that's a team that's open for collaboration and really open to other ideas. So think about that as we go through this week.